You are listening to the Vice and Teramo Show. <laughs> Actually, you are eating while you should be hosting, co-hosting the Vice and Teramo Show. I didn't know you were going to start. <laughs> Welcome to the Vices in Caramo 30 Minutes to Kill podcast. You are listening to the Vices Interimo Show, 30 Minutes to Kill. More or less. The incredible podcast with the unpronounceable name. We are a horror entertainment podcast featuring mostly spoiler-free discussions of horror, suspense and psychological thrillers. I am your horror host, Michael Mad Saxon Jones here with my lovely wife Lori. The show is usually broken up into four parts. Laid to rest, where we tie up loose ends from earlier shows. Followed by our featured movie review. Garbage in Garbage Out, is where we talk about anything we have watched seen online or even read since the last show. Lastly we always try to end the show with the crawling chaos, a topic or factoid we have never talked about on the show before. Sometimes silly sometimes serious but always chaotic. So, (laughs) here's the... uh, Give me a minute here. That's all right. I think I've already played the intro by now, so uh, oh, good. they already know they're listening to the Vice and Teramo show, Excuse 30 me. Minutes to Kill, okay. the awesome podcast with the unpronounceable name, blah, blah, blah. All right, so, um, yeah, so this is episode 316, and it's um, Winchester, and I'm going to, uh, that's from 2018, and uh, so laid to rest, anything to cover laid to rest. Well, I was going to say late to rest. Did you have anything to cover from the last episode from Mother? Uh, well, we saw it on the top ten movies it, that people, people walked, walked out on. Out of. Yeah, walked out or controversial type things. Yeah, uh, it was number five of their list of yeah. ten. They didn't give a good reason for it though. They just talked about Aronofsky and how he likes to stir up trouble and. Yeah, I'm paraphrasing that movie a bit. Stirred up plenty of trouble. It, it did. It was polarizing. Some people thought it was great, and yeah. In the meantime, I did share with you my vision of the film or my version of it and right. what I got from it. Not saying right. that it was correct or whatever. So, yeah, uh, and, uh, I guess I think we never I, found I like out. that. Well, no, we don't. But uh, I anyhow. mean, I'd be curious to know what uh, what was really intended like there. When you write something like that, like what are you thinking? What are you going for? Yeah. I got gotcha. you. All right. I would. I would be curious to know. Uh, with... Obviously, not curious enough to try to find out. <laughs> Okay, so uh, anything else to tie up? I, I mentioned this briefly a couple of weeks ago, <clears throat> but this kind of leads into our patrons, um, our patrons, uh, Goldfish, uh, at Lonely Bob, and uh, this was thanks to Big Al V. I had mentioned before something about taking a master class, yeah, and uh, but it was just in passing, so it maybe it doesn't appropriate here in in this portion of the podcast, but late to rest. But I did take a master class, or am taking a master class, or okay. did sign up for one. And I think was, you maybe mentioned it before. Yeah, if you were thinking about. I, I was it. thinking about doing one for electronic music. And yeah, stuff I thought like you that. would do the music one, or no. so. So you chose one. What is it? Well, it's on podcasting, of course. That's <laughs> it's what I do more of than my dance hits that I'm currently mixing. Okay. So um, you're not putting together many. Club mixes lately. Oh, well, or, no, I mean, you know, every now and then you guys get to hear them on here, but uh, yes, but whatever. you know what? They're, you do them for the podcast. That's true. Everything leads back to here. It certainly seems that way. So I don't know if that's going to make any immediate improvements in uh, what you guys hear anytime soon. But uh, I am taking a class, and uh, I've mentioned Big Al V because, of course, uh, taking a cue from him some time ago that uh, why wouldn't you go to the Podfather and see what he had to say there. And the pod father being uh, Adam Carollo. Of Adam Carollo. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, you know, let's just get into the movie and stuff. Nobody cares about any of this stuff. They want to hear what know? we had to say about this movie <laughs> and our wonderful adventures there. Okay. And why we couldn't take any pictures. But anyhow, <clears throat> Winchester, 2018, and uh, I'll have you read the synopsis. It's 
gargantuan seven-storied structure with no apparent rhyme or reason. Each maze of halls more confusing than the next. It's under never-ending construction. It was built on the orders of a grieving widow. Sarah Winchester is the majority shareholder of the Winchester Repeating Arms Company. You want to take it away from her? We're worried about her sanity, Dr. Price. Do you believe in ghosts, Doctor? I do not believe in anything I cannot see or study. I can feel it. In the air. In the walls. This spirit has a power we've not seen before. It has found us. I can't see that far away. Here we go. Ensconced in her sprawling California mansion, eccentric firearm heiress Sarah Winchester believes she is haunted by the souls of people killed by the Winchester repeating rifle. Simple, short, straight to the point. Yeah. Um, It's almost more about the guy who goes there, the doctor. It it kind of is. Yeah. And I'm wondering uh, if they took certain, I don't want to say took, well, we know they took certain liberties with it because... This isn't, yes. a, this isn't a fact-based this, account. No, this was just totally a fictional story inspired <laughs> by... Inspired by this, yeah. yeah. Well, let's hear what we had to say about it right after watching it. Okay. So this is one of the few times that I would almost argue... For me, it's too soon to talk about the movie. Really? Winchester is the movie that we just saw. Yeah. So it's yet another on the road episode. (laughs) Um, Yeah. So there you go. I'll start out with that. Uh, Too soon. Yeah. So generally, uh, what did you think? I'm sure you've read the synopsis by now. The The movie was enhanced, arguably... By the fact that, for me at least, that I've, since I've been to the Winchester Mystery House now, yeah. at least once, you've been multiple times, yes? Twice. Twice, okay. <laughs> there, there you go. Only That's, twice as many times as you. It's multiple, yeah, there you go. It's multiple of one. Um, yeah, well, so what did you think? Um, it was good. Okay. I but can, that's about it. Okay, there we go. Okay. I went, it's I'm not sorry. too soon to talk about it. Well. I mean, you think your opinion might change later? I don't. I guess not. I guess not. It had a good second half. Yeah. The first half was very, well, it was PG-13, which isn't always a bad thing for me. No. And I know you like that. You prefer that sometimes they, they do that. Yeah, so because it challenges will... it challenges filmmakers to do a better job. Okay. So I don't... They could take an easy, soft route, uh-huh. which this movie did. Okay. There you or go. you yeah. could really make a really scary... Intense. And intense, yes, yeah. and disturbing PG-13, yeah. because we've seen them before. Yeah. So this one, for me, had a little bit of an identity crisis... It's the best way I can okay. describe it. It was it was a ghost story. Kind of a... Or, inspired by... Yeah. The Winchester Mystery House. Right. Um, yes, of course, Sarah Winchester is a real person. Right. And she was the heiress to the Winchester fortune. Right. Um, I'll have to see if we have any pictures or videos or anything from, from our visit last year. Yeah. Was last year? Was it two years ago? Well, it was October 2016. Wow, nice. Okay. And what's interesting, well, because it's the last time we had a, like, a long vacation. Okay. 
Um, and part of it was closed for some reason. Yeah, and they told us it was closed because they were filming a movie. Yeah. And you were also not allowed to... They don't usually Pictures. let you take photos inside anyway, so that part I was a little confused. But they were really super strict because they had sold the rights to some of the rooms... Not the right to the room, but to the right of the image of the room uh-huh. to the um, to the company to to the production company <laughs> okay. or whatever. Right. The people who were filming, they sold the rights, so it was super strict um, when we were there. Okay. So back to the movie. Yes. Well acted. Yes. Great special effects. Yeah. Um, everything was top notch, so yeah. the only place it fell down was a little bit of the story. I think so. And I don't think it was tight enough. I just... I, You know, I wanted to see more more of the house and more of the history, and but that's not what it is at all, because they just took a ton of liberties. Um, mm-hmm. You know, that was not Sarah Winchester's personality according to all of the people that worked for her right i mean very little is known about her right you know only two photos exist of her and all the historians argue over the real reasons why she built the house that way right it is true she went to a medium it is true that um someone told her once that the spirits of all of the dead that were killed by the winchester rifle were surrounding her or would come or whatever Right. But there's some argument as to how she really felt about that, how superstitious she was, how afraid she was. or. Uh, but the Sarah in this movie, um, because when you go to the house and you read about her online or whatever, you take the tour at the house, they'll tell you that they think maybe she built the crazy house with all the doors and windows and stairs to nowhere and all the little hidey holes to confuse the spirits. Like, right. more like so that they would leave her be. Right. To appease them or to keep them confused or... But the movie, as we just saw, she was helping them and building each spirit a room so they were comfortable and she could talk to them. And, Where they died. And apologize and help them through their... Right. So, I mean, all of that was just completely... Um, Fabricated for yes. the movie. Okay. Yeah. Um, with that story unfolding... I think it would have been, you know, I, I don't know what the runtime on this was, but I'm going to say it could have been cut down maybe yes. even 10 minutes yes. or so. Yes, even more. Which is a lot in a, in a movie like this. Well, he- Or give more, not just the information dump, but right. weave it into the story a little bit more. Yeah. Um, yeah, it didn't need to be this long at all. And I, after we walked out of the theater, the first thing I was like, okay, I'm going to have to talk about this thing. And like, what's my, I already knew that I just thought, you know, I thought it was good. It was a good yeah. ghost story, but I knew something was also not quite right. Mm-hmm. And what I was thinking was like, maybe it, it was like a really good, like an hour long, um, like TV story. Like paranormal investigation well, special, it, it was or put on by CBS Studios or whatever. <laughs> oh, that. Um, okay. But um, yeah, it didn't necessarily need to be emotion. Right. But they tried the- to stress. It was a it was a great ghost story. I mean, you know, when mm-hmm. you when everything's revealed and what's going on, I love a good ghost story and you know the little twists and turns and stuff. Right. They were in there, but it just there was a lot of. Um, a lot of filler? Empty space or filler, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, Which is a little disappointing. I was super excited. Yeah. I mean, a movie at the Winchester Mystery House about Sarah Winchester. Yeah. Um, I get it. And but it wasn't really about, her, you know, the real Sarah Winchester or the real house, right. per se. Right. Um, it was just a total reimagining. Um, yeah, I don't know. Okay. I, I wouldn't... I don't know. Here's it's, it's a great horror starter flick. Well, I thought of that too. It's like because I loved ghost stories. I mean, growing up when I was little, I I'm still not into blood and guts unless it relates. I mean, if it's there for a reason, right? Um, not just for a rated R rating, right? Um, or whatever. If it relates to the story and it's there for a reason, fine. Yeah. But um, that's not the point. Um, Growing up, I loved all the ghost stories. They were my favorite. Um, And I was allowed to watch, you know, a lot of the ghost stories for younger audiences were really good. 
Mm-hmm. Um, look at Watcher in the Woods. <laughs> that was a Disney movie. Um, but this, this definitely, I was thinking, okay, while I was watching it, I was thinking, man, I'd have loved this when I was a kid. But, like, the, the hero of the story, you know, he had a drug problem. You know, it starts out where he's with prostitutes. And so I was, but, I mean, in that, they just kind of glazed over yeah, that. Yeah, it's PG-13 or right. whatever. But, so okay. it wasn't a big deal. But that wouldn't, you're saying that wouldn't be suitable for a child-friendly per se. Well, I mean, I mean, sure. I mean, it wasn't over the top or anything. Maybe the kids would just think he had lots of nice um, friends that come <laughs> over to hang out. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, it could have totally been, well, and then there's, okay, you know what? Are you talking yourself out of or into Well, I was just going to say, you know what, though? it The big theme of this is gun violence, so maybe it isn't mm. appropriate. I don't think of that thing because guns don't bother me. Right. Um, you know, we grew up with guns in the house, hunting, family, shooting, right. range, whatever. So guns like, handle responsibly. But, yeah, so now that I'm thinking about it, a lot of people, though maybe... Maybe, maybe it's what they should, yes. Maybe it's a cautionary tale against guns, <laughs> you know. Guns are bad. Right. Maybe. So, uh, so I don't know. Maybe, the, you know what, yeah, you said the movie maybe had an identity crisis. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Because okay. I'm not quite sure who it was for. Okay. I guess anyone who likes a ghost story. That's who it's for. Okay. A, a good start then. Okay, yeah. so what... And the kids can watch it. S- scale of 1 to 5. What are you giving it? Um, I liked it, so a 3 out of 5. And I'm giving it a 3. Of course, it gets extra points just for me specifically, just because, hey, I've been there. I know, I know that staircase. I almost hit my head on the same... Yeah. You know, the door star yeah. on the thing that he did. And that was something else, too, that when we got... And I, I would be interested to go back there because depending on who your tour master, your whatever... Tour is, master? I don't know. Your what, tour guide? Whoever your tour guide. There we go. Whoever your tour guide is, I think... I am the tour master. ...is going to give you a different... Um, yeah. A different walkthrough. Well... And the woman who gave us the tour Mm -hmm. um, was very much against the idea of anything supernatural being there or that Sarah Winchester was not, you know, afraid of spirits or any of that stuff. She thought all of that was malarkey. So, and I remember the first time, the only other time I went, the, the, the guy who gave us the tour was totally into all the spooky stuff. Okay. So, yeah, depending on your tour guide, yeah, it's yeah. kind of interesting. Yeah. Because, on the one hand, you've got this, uh, you go up one, one flight, or one, not one flight, rather, you go up one story from the bottom to the, you know, the second story in the house there, and there's like 46 steps. Like, yeah. that's crazy. Why would you have a nutty staircase like that that has a switchback four times? Uh, and you see it you in the and movie. I, you and I went up that staircase, and remember, it comes off the garage. Right. And it's and that it's That was... The, it's, you go in the garage. You start the tour. You go in the garage, and that's where she would... Um, her carriage, her horse-drawn carriage would be parked, and she would go in the house through a tiny little door right. and go up that... Um, the switchback one, not yeah. the... Not the, like, horseshoe, roundabout, right. crazy staircase, but just the switchback with the little two-inch steps. But if steps. you factor in how tall she was and the fact that she had arthritis... Yeah, and they kind of missed that. I was hoping they, they would... They mentioned a little bit about that. It, it did come up, like, yeah, once in passing. she think, didn't but. come off as a lady that had arthritis. She moved around just fine. Man, and she took a beating, and she was totally fine. <laughs> so some well, of that... that's just Helen Mirren. I just expect her okay. to be able to take sure. it. Sure. She, she could take a, a punch, huh? a great actress from, from okay. forever. Well, forever. Yeah. But yeah, in, in a good way. I mean, she's wonderful. But yeah, and Sarah was supposed to be just a little over four foot tall. Yeah. So, but they didn't, you know, at the end, she's standing there talking to the, you know, the hero. And she just looks like, uh, you know, she's five foot four or something. Right. Anyway, average. So I was kind of hoping they would make her look really tiny. Yeah. Um, well, I but think whatever. It, uh, yeah, and I mean, as far as that goes, I give it a uh, solid three. Yeah, with a, a couple yeah, of gonna, points for me. Do you, a recommendation? Talk. It's a ca- uh, not a cautious recommend, but I mean, it's you know, see it. You don't necessarily have to see it in the theater. To no, I think to if you it. just like a ghost story and 
Um, you know, and it wasn't real scary or anything. It was just startle scares. Yeah, a lot of jump scares. And that was it. So I guess if I would warn people of that first and yeah. maybe if they're in, well, you know, and I can't even say if they're interested in the house because you really didn't get to see a lot of it. No. I was really hoping for more, um, because there's a lot of unique things in that house, well, and, and that you w- saw very, very few of them. You that, only saw a couple. That was something else, too, in reality, <laughs> since the house, I mean, since it did suffer damage in the earthquake, and there yeah, were that was other interesting. accidents. I think I want to say there was there a fire or two. I think um, so. And so on. And therefore, rooms just kind of got built on just because, like, well, there was something here. Now we're going to do something different now. Yeah. And it wasn't necessarily intentional that, like... Well, I want the staircase to go here because right. it's well, to trick and, somebody or to trick a spirit. Yeah, it and was, a, a, according, yeah, out of necessity, just well, according to the tour guide we had this last time, and I've I've read it before. Um, Sarah was very interested in architecture. She thought of herself as an amateur architect. Yeah. So she did design all of that, and she, you know, when you're rolling in money and you have nothing better to do, and you <laughs> love architecture and building like it's only natural yeah yeah absolutely i remember the parlor was beautiful i wanted to talk a little bit too about the number 13 but like maybe i would save that for a crawling chaos or whatever i don't know because well that part was at least right the whole house is the number 13 is a theme in the house throughout the house 13 window panes 13 of a pattern on the wall 13 and a spider web and yes spider web motifs are all over the house so uh, Um, but they were good things she put them there for positive reasons well and that's the thing and for a long time 13 was a good number a positive number and i don't know um the only thing i know about numerology is some biblical stuff a little bit like i mean i know six is the number of man you know, 666, the number of the beast, blah, blah, blah. Um, seven is supposedly divine, number of God. I don't know if six and seven added together is something. That's why it was seen as positive. Yeah. Maybe, like I said, maybe I need to stop talking about that. We'll save that for later. That tells Another me it would discussion. just be balance. Yeah. Okay. So. I don't know. I don't know. But, okay. I'm just making stuff up. You do that a lot. <laughs> Probably well, not as much I'm as I do, thinking. Though. Okay. That's good. Um, well, if you put together, you know, the number of God and the, or the number of man and the number of, you know, Satan or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. Or you have God. I don't know. Okay. Anyway. Balance. We're going someplace else entirely now. Yeah. Uh, back to the movie. Let's reel it back in. It's, uh, just what it is. Yeah. Uh, you, so you, you get, you, yeah, you get what you pay for. Yeah. You, you get, uh, get what? Yeah, I don't know. You get what you I, pay for. I'm just saying. Well, because we saw it as a matinee, I guess. I don't know. Oh, well, we see uh, everything as matinees. Usually, yeah. Could you see us going in the evening with all the crowds paying, you know, $14 or whatever it is now? Uh, no. I don't think so. It was bad enough, whatever that our alarm was, it was going off every 10 minutes or something. I'm not yeah. sure whether that was in the movie theater or that was somebody's phone. I don't think so. I don't know. If it was somebody's phone, they need to be punched out. Yeah. Okay. Before we go down that road, um, let's move on and uh, go to our next segment. Okay. All right. What? Anza Avenue Rehabilitation. This avenue needs to be rehabilitated. You know, all of freaking this whole South Bay area needs a rehabilitation. So all I see them doing is they're ripping up all the sidewalks. You can push that stop button anytime. Causing now. accidents. Can, oh, hit, my gosh. Hit the stop button. Yes. Thank you. So. Do you have any new opinions on it or have you changed your mind? I or? haven't changed my mind. I think think what I liked best about this was the fact that we had visited the house ourselves. Okay. Though I'm disappointed we didn't get any pictures inside. Everything we took was from the outside. Right. Um, You know, I've been there, I've been there one other time and I don't remember them letting you take pictures anyway. Really? So they made such a big deal about it. They were really strict about it this time. Yeah. Because the, because they were going to be doing the filming of this movie. Yeah. They've maybe had to, (laughs) um, I've noticed that a lot of places where you used to not be able to bring your cameras in, well, everybody has a phone now. Right. Your phone is your camera. They're not going to take away people's phones. So people are, even when you're not supposed to, people are snapping Sneaking photos and you can't. You, so I think I think a lot of places have become lenient. Okay. 
Um, Because they were, I actually had a camera, and I remember I did not take it in because you weren't allowed to do that. Hmm. That was pre-cell phone. Right, right. We all had pagers. Right. Those were allowed. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, pagers. And I was like, dang it, now I need to find a pay phone. (laughs) How funny. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, Oh, and one more thing about the movie, Winchester. Yeah. Um, We expressed our opinions already. Mm -hmm. Um. And I think I remember saying I was a little disappointed and mm-hmm. whatnot. Yeah. Anyway, um, I will just say that my one of my sisters went, and she let me know that they went to go see it, and she said they all almost fell asleep. <laughs> so there's that. Well, that family stays up way too late, and so. But I'm yeah. I don't not know here all, to chastise them. I don't know them, who all but, went, uh, but she's like, yeah, we went and saw that. We almost fell asleep. <laughs> So, yeah, it's definitely not nonstop action. It's or, subtle, and I just, yeah. I'm going to blame it all on the, the writing, though. And, yeah. And say it could yeah. have been written a little bit tighter. Well, written and directed. Why am I putting, I'm trying to eat popcorn. That's a terrible idea. I know. You're did supposed you see, to be hosting though, I put a it in my mouth, and I took it right back out. I did. That's gross. Don't stick that back in there. I might eat some of those. No, you're not going to. Gross. You'll pick it up, and it'll be soggy. You're not going to want it. <laughs> Moving right along, then, I think uh, garbage in. Hey, it ties right in. Garbage in, garbage out. (laughs) Yeah. All right. Hey, my popcorn's not garbage. (laughs) So, for garbage in, garbage out, we... um, I watched a bunch of anime movies while I was laid up on the couch for a couple of days. Uh, Heavenly Sword, based on the video game, uh, was okay. Yeah. Mediocre at best. I mean, it it was all right for what it was. I actually kind of, I actually kind of liked that one because, but it looked like a video game. Yeah. Well, I mean, I felt like I was watching the cutscenes of a video game just all together. Yeah. So yeah, I was kind of okay. I don't know. I kind of liked it. I was expecting a little bit more out of it. I don't know. The other thing I watched was Gotham by Gaslight. Yeah, that so was interesting. An, an elsewhere story with uh, Batman in Victorian England dealing yeah. with Jack the Ripper. Yeah, um, interesting twist. Um, not as uh, well. I don't want to call it hardcore because everything's hardcore right now. But you know, it was uh, so hot right now. Yeah, it, it was kind of a soft adaptation of it. I guess. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it not was, that it, it has to okay. be. I have to say, a lot of the Batman ones are not great for me. Yeah. This was was a fair to Midland. It was it's, okay. I still kind of li- like the, the one with John Constantine. Okay. I still kind of liked that one probably the best. All right. This one was an interesting concept for sure, Batman in a... Well, because it was also based on the actual comic book itself and stuff. <clears throat> right, right. Um, I'm sorry, Keepa. Of course, I got sick again after... After our, after we recorded our last podcast and said I'd been sick and I finally felt good, <laughs> I woke up like, got that round totally two. sick all over round again, and I'm just three. coming out of it again. Yeah. Jeez. Uh, the day after we went to see Winchester. Right after that. That was my first day out after being sick. We went and saw Winchester, yep. and I woke up the next morning sick as a dog. Back down again. What the heck? Assault on Arkham. Yes. Now, I like that one better. I like the animation. Oh, I like that. That yeah, was. That one was kind of entertaining. Yeah, but of course it was more like a <laughs> it was, Suicide Squad story. I was going to say it was Suicide Squad. <laughs> exactly. Though Batman did uh, make his appearance and stuff throughout. Yeah. Uh, they're always just, they're good. I mean, they're fun to watch, but yeah. they're never like, I don't know. I'm not sure I included in the artwork, but we finished that damn Walking Dead. Oh, wait, that's... Uh, that damn Walking Dead? Well, they wound up at the dam. It was D-A-M, not D-A-M. Oh, the yeah. D-A-M. <laughs> Though it was damned from the beginning because of awful oh. characters. So we went back and we watched, we binge watched. Fear. Fear the Walking Dead. The Walking Dead. Dead. Yeah. Yes. Um, damn. <laughs> that's where they ended up, and uh, yes. that's when it got better after about two seasons. But we yeah, plowed I through guess. it. Um the other thing we did, though... Plowed through it. More like plotted through it. The, like, can we just get there? Unlike that, we also binged The Strain all four seasons, though we had seen two and a half or more seasons. Yeah, we watched all of them um, when they were airing on television. Right. The first two seasons, two and a half seasons, two and a half we, seasons. we watched them, yeah. and that's when we got rid of television. Right. 
So yeah, we just finally caught up. So we caught up. We finished it. They finished mm-hmm. the season. It was absolutely satisfactory. Yes. In a good way. Yes. Yeah. We just watched the last one last night, and I woke up today thinking I was sad because we couldn't watch The Strain today. <laughs> I really enjoyed it a lot. We did. We enjoyed the characters, and the it, development, the whole, yeah, whole thing. Yeah, it really, I mean, things just from bad to worse to worse to worse. Right. I appreciated the, um, yeah, the change. In, I mean, the relationships, it wasn't just this merry band of heroes going through this thing. Mm-hmm. You know, just the separation, the problems between them. Like, it was very realistic, right. I guess. Right, Though, you did say there were a few things that were kind of corny <clears throat> here and there. but Like what? I don't remember. You were saying uh, the things to do with Gus and specific characters and people meeting. But not... It obviously, if you're not remembering it now. Are you sure used the term corny? I'm sure you did, twice, and it struck me, and I well, didn't write it down. Why didn't you write it down? I should have written it down. But obviously. Because there was so much good stuff. If there were oh. two corny things in, like, thousands of really cool, awesome, interesting things, then. That was going to be my point. That's why I don't remember. That was going to be my point. Any negative comments like we had. Just a couple or... of small things here and there. It, and more, well, it got to be a frustrating, a couple of characters are frustrating, but they're yeah. frustrating in the same way that you love to hate whatever. Well, I or, feel like, unfortunately, I feel like Gus's character was the one they messed up on a little bit. If I had to say they did anything mm-hmm. kind of hokey, yeah. it might have been his character. He made some just really bad, people make bad decisions. And under duress, under the I worst, know. you're yes. going to make bad decisions. Yeah. But, but some of those didn't. But anyhow, but that's those are minor glitches <clears throat> in what was I think. Oh yeah, a I can't great even series. really think of any. If either. anybody hasn't seen the strain, yeah. definitely I think. Yeah. Watch it. If you could get past sure. those hideous uh uh vampires. Strigoi. Vampires, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely not uh they're vampires, but not really. I had down here to talk about life with Elizabeth, but we never did find a uh a clip to oh. include with that, did you? No. Yeah. So we we got that because we had antenna TV. I watched. So we had yeah, it was a antenna it was, for the TV. It was Betty White's birthday uh-huh. just a, a couple weeks back, mm-hmm. and um, I put on antenna TV with the channel. It's called antenna TV. A lot of people maybe don't aren't aware of that. Mm-hmm. But if you have a TV antenna and you're pulling the TV broadcast out of the air for free, you will get antenna TV. Is that, it's a real thing. Is that that box thing that steals people? We talked people? about this. We talked about that already. Yeah, Never mind. because people, some people younger than us are like, what are you talking about? Like, they, they were not around when we, like. Antenna they, TV was not They were thing. born with cable TV. They right. have no idea that there's like a free signal. Signal out there if you can catch yeah. it. Yeah. So okay. anyway, Life of Elizabeth. Yeah, it was one of the first shows she was on. She looked about 20. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, I I. You're kind of springing this on me, or I'd have done the research. Well, that's okay. We'll we'll I look into. I told it more. you more about it, but it was just it was a half hour show, but it was three just like short vignettes, mm-hmm. um, just some funny skits with she and her husband, not mm-hmm. not her actual husband, TV husband, her TV husband. Yeah. But yeah, and they were just funny little skits. Okay. Um, yeah. I'll see what else I can find. We'll include that in the show notes. Yeah. It was As a, always, it was you can find our our show notes on Podomatic. Mm-hmm. Um. Or you can find them just about anywhere, but if you have trouble clicking on them, the hyperlinks and such are available at Podomatic. Though, of course, you can find us on Podomatic, Stitchers, iTunes, Blueberry. Pod Pickle. Pod Pickle. Blueberry. <laughs> exactly. I like the food ones. I can tell. I guess you're not going to tell anybody I've played like hundreds of hours of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I was going to say that, but... Wow. You, had, you had brought up the pickle, so I was... I was going to share that. Sorry. Wow. Losing control of this episode. Uh, Breath of the Wild. Yes. What is that? Is that, uh, you seem to. We're just going to talk about that now after you hit the yodeling pickle. (laughs) After I hit the yodeling pickle. Have we talked before about the yodeling pickle? We've already talked about the yodeling pickle last time. Well, there he was. He just made an appearance. Well, and you can also see him in the artwork announcing our patrons. Oh, wonderful. (laughs) Wonderful. We love our yodeling pickle. Breath of the Wild, that's what we're talking about. Yeah, there's not really much to say. I played it hundreds of hours, so obviously it's I'm enjoying it immensely. All right. Yeah. Well, I think we killed it. 
Yes. All right. Well, thank you all for listening. Hey, I finally got my amiibo to work. Yes, you did. So now I have Wolf Link from Twilight Princess to help me do battle. Awesome. It's fun. Thank you, little Brian. (laughs) You're the best friend ever. Um, so where was I? He's so thoughtful. So for our crawling chaos, it's uh, well, it's like uh, Pee Wee's Playhouse. We got a word of the day: triskaidekaphobia. Wow! You look like Do you're. Do we waiting. have to scream real loud? <laughs> I'm, I'm probably not going to be using it in too many sentences. I'm just going okay. to kind of refer you to go someplace else to look up triskaidekaphobia. Yeah. I ought, to, deck. I ought to know oh. how to pronounce it because it comes up in magic. They use that number a lot. There's uh, things that, uh, there are specific cards that interact with 13 cards in your graveyard. or 13 So it's a light. fear of the number 13. But, yeah, Triskaidekaphobia is the fear of the number 13. I bring that up because we had talked about it while we were recording on the way back down the hill about the fact that she had, she... Sarah Winchester had uh-huh. so many uh, references to the number thirteen, and while right. initially, oh, well, we talked about that a little bit. We in the talked car, a little I bit remember. about that and stuff, and I could not think of the name. Well, I could think of it, but I couldn't pronounce it. I practiced all day long. Triskaidekaphobia. Good job. <laughs> Don't ask me to spell so it. So I guess I could see the three ten in there. The three and ten Triskaidek. I mean, if you take the word apart. Okay. Yep. I, I can see that. Okay. So you were... Um, yeah. So Friday the 13th is a negative connotation. I think that's because yeah. the Knights Temple were wiped ghosts. out. <laughs> um, I mean, they could have picked any number, right? Well, no. There's 20 specific, ghosts, 30 ghosts. There's specific reasons why 13. <laughs> yeah. And to find out more about that, I'm going to refer you to a couple of short videos that I found online to learn a little bit more about that. Um does it explain why it went from... It doesn't. I couldn't good, find anything that okay. specifically talks about the correlation between positive and negative, right and wrong, when it was good, when it turned bad, why it turned bad. Um, the negative association... Actually, the negative association has been there since Babylonian times. Um, okay, so that would make me think that... Well, it's been it negative for a long time, but then the spiritualist became movement became positive. Yeah, instead of it was always a, a well, positive thing, and we've made it negative. For supposedly, some supposedly twelve is Sounds a complete like number, completion. Mm-hmm. Twelve months, twelve hours in a day, and so on, and so thirteen. It, you know, the videos do a better job describing it. Than thirteen, I, than it's I a baker's dozen. Exactly. What so could if be you wrong have, with that? <laughs> Triskaidekaphobia, you will never order a baker's dozen, would you? <laughs> I guess not. All right. Uh, you know, still in some elevators and some uh, some buildings you find these days, they still don't have a number 13 right. floor. They don't have a, a 13 and so on. But uh, anyhow. That so goes that was, into the whole superstitions that things. Was, uh, yeah, that was my little crawling. Do you have rumor. any superstitions? Do I? I probably yeah. have all kinds of them. Really? I'm, I'm just riddled with magical thinking. <laughs> Oh, you are riddled, huh? Yep. Okay. I don't know. But yeah, I won't get into that. We'll we'll maybe save that for another short topic, perhaps. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, this is becoming something other than what I, I hear. Triskaidekaphobia. Like. Triskaidekaphobia. Yep. Yeah, but no, I was going to ask you why. Why do you ask? Do you have any superstitions? I don't think so. Hmm. I think just you might. Per- really? Yeah. I'm just saying that. To I be don't difficult. have any of the. Uh... Any of the standard. Yeah. Things? Okay. Uh, you'll see me opening an umbrella in the house while walking under a ladder and talking to my black cat. I don't know. Yeah, none of that kind of stuff. Uh, okay. None of the classics. None of the classics. No, All right. Yeah, this is getting ridiculous. We yeah. need to. We're yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there you go. That's okay. our. That's our crawling chaos.
thanking everybody and telling them to stay tuned for later in the week where you can do our Throwback Thursday uh, from beyond. Oh. Yeah. So we're also getting into a rather sticky area because we're going to be coming across our lost episodes very soon. Well, we won't be coming across them. They will be gone. There will be a gap. Episodes between 30 and 60 were lost because that whole wow. disc got destroyed. I was very disappointed uh, talking with Darren uh, a couple weeks back. I went through to track some of the episodes to look for, and at last count, like I had 73 missing episodes. We've only done 300 and some. I don't think that number is 100% correct. I may have found the discs yeah, that's a couple of discs since if then, that's so. but uh, you know, comp- you're never ready when the computer dies and stuff. It just it gets lost. So, archive it's important. Though I'm not sure who. You didn't lose them off your computer, though. Some I did. Some well, some I burned a disc, and yeah. the discs were corrupted, and, yeah. and got lost. Because you threw them into your hoard pile, and they probably got mangled. Nothing to do with anything we're talking about. Yeah, no. Okay. That's an electronic glitch. Anyhow. Enough about that. Oh, an electronic list. <laughs> yes. We'll, uh, anyhow, thank you all for listening. Not, not a neurological one. No. Turning <laughs> to uh, to next episode, yes. Look for that. Look for another short topic coming soon, though I've started to discuss that with you. Uh, it's going to be decade-defining movies, but personal on a personal level, if you could think of that. Starting for me with the 80s, because up until then, I... Wasn't okay. in control of my life. Does that make sense? Like uh, to be able to choose to watch movies and watch right. multiple movies or single movies multiple times. Wasn't able to do that before. Okay. Is that just sounding weirder and weirder? No. Okay. Well, that's why I just started with the '80s. What two movies define the '80s for you? The '90s, 2000s. What what movies are there? Mm. So that I have to bring this up earlier because as we talked about short topics. They're yeah. no good if I spring them on you. Because yeah. you need to have an answer for me. I'm still not sure I'll have an answer. Well, that's another thing coming up in the future here. I don't know exactly when. But uh, in the meantime, thank you for listening. Thanks for sticking out out this far. And uh, thanks, as always, to our patrons. Your support means everything. At Lonely Bob, Big Al V, and Goldfish. And thanks to everybody else who likes, listens, and comments. Bye. Come at the ground like making a sound The smell of death is all around And at night when the cold wind blows No one cares, nobody knows I don't want to be buried In the pet cemetery Now you can eat your popcorn Okay I was going to say, um, are you still recording? Maybe this isn't for everybody to hear. Oh, that sounds juicy. No. No? All right.